So quickly by show of hands, how many people in the room have used Coinbase? Okay. That looks like about 80% of the room, I think. So Brian, um, when you first started about five years ago, did you ever think you'd be in a room with like 500 people and roughly 80% would have used your product? Not really. I mean, I, was, I had a lot of uh, self-doubt about that actually in the early days around 2011. I was working at Airbnb as a software engineer and I was tinkering with this kind of stuff on nights and weekends, trying to get my friends interested in it. And like, really most of my friends didn't get it or they thought it was like a stupid idea. Um, and so I had to make this decision like, do I really want to quit my my good day job at Airbnb and go try out and do this? Did I really want to be like that Bitcoin guy? It was really sketchy even at that time especially. So it was a really scary thing to do. What gave you the conviction to do it? Actually, I think the thing that gave me the conviction was that I applied to Y Combinator and um, got accepted. And so I, ha I had a lot of respect for Paul Graham just from reading his uh, essays online and stuff like that. And the fact that he was willing to give me a check for like 150,000 it was like, wow, somebody believes in me, I'm not crazy. Hmm. Um, that's what made me quit. So when you pitched at YC Demo Day in 2012, uh, how did most investors at that time react? Most investors didn't understand it at all. Um, sort of the name of the game at Demo Day was to run around and collect uh, business cards as best you could. And so I collected about 30 of them. Actually, I have this memory of uh, going up to one of the, some group of people, some investors at that event. They'd all had a couple of drinks at that point. And um, I kind of launched right into my pitch. I was like, you know, this novice entrepreneur. And I was like, we're going to change the financial system. I made this wallet. It's like digital currency. And they started asking me these questions. And I realized after about five minutes that they were just kind of making fun of me. Um, and they were like, mm -hmm, tell us how this is going to make lots of money. Uh-huh, sure. So, you know, I guess digital currency people had the last laugh on that one. But um, <laughs> yeah. Got it. Um, so let's talk about Token, um, your new product that you guys launched uh, last month. Um, why don't you explain you know, what it is and why you're excited about it? Yeah, so Token's really simple. It's uh, on the surface. It's really a messaging app that has money baked into it. And um, there's some unique properties to it as well. Uh, those payments work in every country of the world from day one. Uh, number two, you're not just paying other people. There's an app platform. We've made it dramatically easier for people to build digital currency apps. And then uh, every, everybody's in control of their own money. Your keys will never leave the device. And we have this reputation system built in. So the reason why this is significant in my mind is that uh, digital currency today is largely about speculation. People are investing in it and they have this idea that there's going to be some huge future potential for digital currency. And the time has come to shift digital currency from being a speculative investment to being uh, delivering real value for people somewhere in the world. And so what, what I've realized is that there's a huge segment of people out there in the world who don't have access to any financial services. Um, in fact, the Gates Foundation says there's 2.5 billion people who have a cell phone, but they don't have access to a bank account or a credit card. And so I think that digital currency's main opportunity to deliver real value in the world right now is bringing financial services to the developing world. And that's what we're going to do with Token. So are you more excited about Token um, from a like, consumer payments perspective um, or like the developer platform and what you might see built on top of it? Or it might be both, but I'm curious your thoughts there. Yeah, I'm more excited about the, uh, the, the app platform and those things that will get built. So there's a variety of things that people need in the financial services that we kind of take for granted here in the first world that they don't have there. So they want a way to get a loan. They want a way to get insurance. They want a way to send money to their family in other countries. They want a way to earn a living, um, get access to jobs. And um, these are all things that can be built really easily on top of Token now. Um, you know, we've made a, a new app interface on top that uh, we call it SOFA. It stands for Simple Open Financial App. And it's kind of the equivalent of like HTML in a web browser. Um, it just got dramatically easier to build these apps. And I have this example here where Mike Hearn, a really great developer in Bitcoin, uh, built the Lighthouse app, took him eight months. And somebody in our community just in the last month built this similar app token together in about eight hours. So that's, that's several orders of magnitude uh, easier to build these apps now, and that just means a thousand more ideas are going to be tried. Got it. 
So the core business of, of Coinbase, and I presume what uh, the vast majority of people here have used Coinbase for is buying and selling digital currencies, right? Um, and presumably with the macro environment right now, that's a really good business to be in. Um, so why um, you know, shift focus from that to building this new product? Yeah, well, our mission at Coinbase is to create an open financial system for the world. And that's why I'm really passionate about digital currency. Like, if this just ends up being kind of a gold 2.0 or some speculative niche investment you know, asset class, that's not why I got into this. Right? I, I want the entire economy of the world to shift to moving on these open protocols for money. And I mean, that's just going to have so many positive uh, outcomes in the world. There's going to be more equality of opportunity. Uh, there's going to be more innovation that happens. There's going to be more efficiency. So prices are going to go down. Good ideas are going to spread all over the world. And literally billions of people who are not included in the current financial system can be lifted out of poverty with this. Um, so the first stages was like, let's just get people connectivity or access to a bit of digital currency. That's why the exchanges needed to get built. Uh, we launched Coinbase to do that. Then we launched um, the institutional exchange, GDAX. And now we're helping digital currency start to be used for real goods and services, adding real value to people's lives in the world with token. Got it. So the underlying infrastructure um, of token is Ethereum from a payments kind of smart contracts perspective. Um, at Coinbase, uh, you know, a few years ago, we were very focused and excited about Bitcoin as a developer platform. And it, I think it never really uh, took off like we hoped it would. Um, and so now there's a lot of excitement uh, about Ethereum, clearly. Um, what excites you about um, Ethereum and why choose to build this on you know, Ethereum versus something else? Yeah, well, in the tokens case, it was a pretty simple um, thing for us, which was that a lot of people were going to send small amounts of money back and forth. And the transaction fees were getting a bit high in Bitcoin, still are. Um, so that's why we decided to build it on Ethereum. But I think the future is still unknown. We're not really wedded to Ethereum. Um, we're open to just building on whichever best technology platform evolves. And I think you're right. Two years ago, I was, I was of the mind that 95% of everything was going to be Bitcoin. And it was going to be a little bit like the internet with TCP IP, um, kind of like a winner take all in that, in that aspect. But it turned out that that wasn't the case. Um, the community around Bitcoin didn't want it to uh, scale quite in the way that I would have guessed or that I wanted it to. And so it's, it's a turning into, in my view, a little bit more of like um, an asset class, like gold or something like that. It's, it's the one that's been around the longest. Uh, people you know, may flee to it in times of uncertainty or something like that. And, it, and it's taking a very conservative uh, roadmap in how they evolve the protocol, which is safe. Um, and then these other ones have come on the scene, like Ethereum, and now there's dozens of these. So it may end up not being a winner-take-all and end up being something more like Visa and, and MasterCard or you know, GIF and JPEG on the internet or something like that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because um, competition uh, creates innovation, right? Like if you have a monopoly with one thing, it tends to stop innovating as fast. Got it. So I think you were the first person that I heard say that you thought that Bitcoin could be the global reserve currency. Um, and that was several years ago. Uh, do you still think that? Um, and do you think you know, Ethereum or something else could, has a better chance now? I don't know, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, I do think some digital currency will end up being essentially the reserve currency of the world. There was a period of time where I didn't really say that publicly because I thought people might think I'm crazy, but I've decided to just embrace the crazy now. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I see a path where that's gonna happen. I think what's, you know, somebody told me this great analogy, like payments are like water, you know, they, they flow to the path of least resistance. And the world has this technology now where things can be fast and cheap and global. And all of these businesses and industries that are built around being an intermediary in payments and collecting a fee for that, um, they're just not that necessary anymore. And so I think you are going to see their revenues um, challenged or decline over the years. Uh, they're, they're all going to evolve. They're not going to disappear. Um, government currencies aren't going to disappear. But in the same way that you know, internet advertising is starting to like, take a chunk out of um, print and television advertising over a long period of time, you're going to see that happen, I think, um, with all the financial system. Got it. So shifting back to token a bit, um, you know, right now it's the developer version, correct? Yeah, we launched a developer preview just about one month ago. Yep. So um, what, in terms of what you're focused on on that, um, like what's, what are the success metrics that you're tracking and what are you thinking in terms of 
getting, um, you know, right now it's on testnet, right? So getting on mainnet for, you know, real ETH being sent. Um, yeah, so the metric we set for ourselves at the end of Q2 is to uh, get 10,000 monthly transacting users. Um, it's kind of like monthly active users some companies use, but we, we're counting it as anybody who did at least one transaction, not just like opening the app and looking at something. Um, so we set that as a goal for ourselves. Uh, we've gotten about, about 10,000 people actually signed up in the first few weeks, and now it's about building out the apps to encourage them to continue to use it. Um, in fact, yeah, this might be a good time to talk about our hackathon. Um, which, so we're actually launching a hackathon on June 3rd. It's open to anybody in the world. We're giving away 25K in Ethereum prizes. And um, we've made it, as I pointed out earlier, you know, two orders of magnitude easier to build these apps. And so I think we're going to see um, some really cool stuff get built on this platform, give people the ability to get a loan, uh, to donate money. Some, you, know, you can look at like WeChat. They had this thing explode with like red packets. Um, a way to earn money, mechanical Turk tasks, all these things I think are going to get built, and some of them are going to turn out to be huge companies, like billion dollar companies. So for, for people in this room, um, you know, if they want to start you know, m messing with the product, uh, what, what do they do, and also what are some apps right now that you've seen that um, might be interesting for people to use? Yeah, so it's pretty easy. You can search token browser in either the Android or iOS app stores and install it. Um, and you know, the, we have some of the apps that are featured there on the browse page. So for example, one of them is really simple. It's called AdBot. Um, once a day, we blast out an ad, the highest bidding one. And uh, you can go in and claim a fraction of the, the payout that that advertiser has put up to, uh, to get your attention for a moment. Um, I've been using that one, by the way. OK. I think good. it gets a lot more exciting when it's real money. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we should be moving off the developer preview um, onto mainnet, hopefully in the coming months. And uh, you know, it's going to be really exciting once real money is involved. I think uh, we're already seeing good traction. It should go from there. Nice. Um, so I guess last question. Um, you know, presumably, there's a number of entrepreneurs in the room. Um, and I'm curious, like, what's something that you've learned um, in the past five years of building Coinbase that you wish you knew when you first started? Yeah, well, I'll just uh, repeat a Paul, something Paul Graham told me, which I think really stuck with me, and it's, um, it's really true, which is, if you're not sure what to build, just build anything. Because usually what happens is after you build something, you've built the wrong thing, but now you know what you should have built. Um, and then you, you're going to build the next thing, and it probably wasn't quite right either, but you're going to learn in the process. So I think a lot of people get stuck in their head, and they're like, I'm not sure what to do. Is it going to be this or that? And by the way, this is true with Token as well. I mean, we were sitting there, a um, company of 160 people. We're, we've got a really successful product, Coinbase, GDAX. Um, we could have just focused on that and continued to grow it. But I really wanted to shift digital currency f from being the speculative investment to being starting to used for real uh, payments in the world. And um, we had a lot of just early discussions like that. It was like, OK, what should we build? Should it be something kind of like WeChat? Or should it use Bitcoin? Should it use Ethereum? And you know, it's kind of like um, I'm coming up to you here today, and I have like this relatively clear pitch about like what it is. But 10 months ago, um, we were just making this stuff up, right? And so we just we, we built something. We built a very early version of token. Um, actually, it wasn't anything like token today. It, it was like. We built a very simple app where you could watch an ad and get a little bit of um, Bitcoin. That was it. And uh, we never showed it to anybody except internally. We threw it away. We were like, OK, that sort of worked, but it sort of didn't. And now let's, we knew the next step and the next step. So if you don't know what to build, build anything. Got it. All right, well, thanks, Brian.